Hello, I'm Michael Redman, professional nine don Go player. In this video, I'm going to talk about an attachment to the star point against uh, the opponent's large knight's shimari, large knight's corner enclosure. So the move I'm talking about is white's attachment here at the star point, which was not played very much at all until computer programs started to show it to us. Actually, AlphaGo was showing us this attachment also, but I'm not going to get into this one in this particular video. In this video, I'm going to exclusively talk about this move, which has become very popular now. So to start with, black has four choices. Now in this diagram that I'm limiting to the upper right corner, I'm going to talk about black A mostly. And then I'm going to talk about all four choices in a full board position. So when white black plays here, white will continue by covering on the third line. And black usually plays an Atari here and will extend down. Black has pr protected the corner territory and white will now cut it the three three point. So this is an important move in this variation. And it's a probe to see how black responds. Black has two directions from which to capture this stone. Black can capture from this side or can capture from this side. However, if black captures from this side, that gives white a free forcing move here. So white would just get a very good position on the side. So when black is going to do that, it is natural for black to want to play this exchange first. And this has become almost a Jose fixed sequence that is supposed to be about even for both sides. And it should be fairly obvious that what white has accomplished is white has built a base on the right side of the board. So this is played by white quite often when white is trying to build a base in this area. And later I will be showing you a full board position. Let's just take a quick look at the other variation. When white cuts here at the 3-3 three, three point, black can also capture from this side, but this makes black just slightly weaker towards the left because white can always play it. Hey, uh, it might be simpler just to show you white playing that move. When white plays here, Again, black has two directions from which to capture this stone. If black plays here, that means again that white will be getting this free forcing move and will get a nice position on the side. So once black has started with this sequence, black's probably going to continue this way. And then white can curl around. Or white can curl around immediately. And again, at any point, white is threatening to extend it A. If black plays away, White can press at four. And because of the weakness in the corner, black probably has to answer twice like this. And white can get a nice position in the center of the board. So you can see that black is taking the territory in this variation. And white is reinforcing the group, mostly. So it's a move that white will want to play in an area of the board where black has the local advantage. And white wants to deal with that and build a relatively strong group in the process here. It's actually more normal for black to be playing on this side, after which white can get these forcing moves. So this is the basic mechanics of this variation here. And now I want to show you how it works in a board position. Okay, this is a actually a game that I played myself in a position where white has played the approach move here and black has pincered it. So this is a position where white can play that attachment against the star point. And in this game, black did cover on the side of the corner. White pressed here and cut on the three, three point. 
So again, black has two choices here. In the game, black chose to curl around. And like this, you can see that in the process, white has got an extra stone here, which was not there in the beginning. For instance, if white had simply played here and here, then white would not have that stone waiting on the side, and it would be fairly easy for black to build a territorial framework in the upper right part of the board. Whereas, when white has played this exchange first, let's uh, start with the attachment and black covers. White has created that one stone. White's gain here is that one stone there on the side, which is waiting for black. So if black just plays the normal sequence that was a Joseki in the former variation, it is very cramped for black. And this stone is working as a useful stone there to keep black hemmed in and stopping black from connecting to the corner in the upper right corner. Uh, the game continued actually with black playing away at this point. Otherwise, black could play here. For the time being, the latter when the latter favors white, it's going to be difficult for black. And the latter I'm talking about is this one when black tries to capture the white stones. There is a sequence like this that can form a ladder going off to the upper left part of the board. And so that is what black is doing with this stone. He's breaking the ladder and the game got exciting after that. And here we have another example where black has a lot of stones on the right side of the board and white is probably going to try to build generally on the left half of the board. So in this variation, it's again a position where it is feasible for white to play this attachment. And if black covers here, again, white covers on the third line. And this is the most popular continuation. Again, white will cut here at the 3-3 point, probing, just asking which side black wants to capture from. So if black just simply captures here, white gets a free forcing move. If black plays here and then captures, this would be an even result, but you can see that white is forming the two functioning stones are these two. White is forming a, a position on the lower side and has got two stones in there. Whereas if white had not started with the attachment in this position, for instance, if white had started with this move, then black would have the option of playing this extension, which would Actually, it would be a very good move, widening the scope of Black's general sphere of influence. So not only is it a good move locally, it's also widening Black's space and putting some pressure on this white stone, taking away its base. So the fact that white gets to play that one extra stone in this variation And I'll just mark the one stone now. The fact that white gets to play this stone marked with a triangle in the forcing sequence there gives white a fairly stable position on the lower side. And so since we started with a black corner enclosure, it means that white wanted to quickly settle the group. And in this case, I think that's a success for white. The overall position is probably close to even. We could also look into the idea of black playing this move. Now this move is, for the time being, it's not so easy for white to live. To Like if white, for instance, played something like 
this, this would be an overextension and black would be able to, for instance, dive in here and put a lot of pressure on the white group. So it's a bit premature for white to do that. And of course, if white played something closer to the white stones, then that would be a bit cramped. So after all, white will extend once here. And when black takes from this side, white can curl around here, threatening to press at this point to really reduce the, uh, the potential that black has in the area. So black will probably continue with this. White can push and push again and extend on the side. So this variation is close to being forcing. And again, we can see that white has made a good position on the left side. Black has a lot of territory on the right side, but black did start with four stones in that area. And so this is not especially good for black. I think it's okay for white because white does have a lot of potential, first of all, in this general area, and also throughout the whole, the left half of the board, white has a lot of potential. So it's playable for white. Once we got to this point where white has played a cut at the three, three point, black had the two options of playing from this side or playing once here and then taking from the other side. This is the one that leaves black with a very solid shape, but also it gives white that one extra stone towards the left side. This one, it has some issues with those white stones that are still on the board there and white is threatening to squeeze from the other side. So black usually has to add some stones here. In the meanwhile, white can get a nice position on the left or on the lower side in let's mark the area in this area. So here we have a board position where white has two stones on the left side of the board. Black has an advantage on the right side of the board. Again, white's goal here will be to create, to settle a group on the right side of the board. So white starts with the attachment. And in this board position, I'm going to look at all four of the options that black has. So black has four options. The first one being this one, by far the most popular move. Also, black can play a hane on the outside or an extension to the third line or down to the three, three point. And in general, when your opponent plays an attachment is right next to your stone like this, you have these four options. So like there's a hane, which is an aggressive move against the white stone, hane on either side, or an extension, which is an extension one side or the other is reinforcing the black stone. So mostly it's a choice of whether you want to be strongly defensive or strongly offensive. First, I'll take a look at this one. In this variation, it again works in this board position for white to play the cut here. Black will curl around once maybe, after which, again, white plays this point. In this case, it's not so much an extension to make a base, but it's an attack on the black stone. It's an attack on this black stone on the side. In this game, black continued by playing here and ran out to the center. After which white also ran out. We can see it's developing into a running fight between this white group and this black group. The good points for white are that uh, one of them being that white is more or less on the top of black is one step further out into the center. There's also the fact that at any point, let's uh, see, let's have black play for instance here. At any point, if white plays here and starts this kind of sequence, it should be relatively easy for white to make some space for eyes in this area, which is not something white's gonna hurry to do. There might be more effective moves for white to play, but white does have more space than black does. The most black can do here on the side, for instance, is to play something like something like this, which if white continues this way, it would not be enough space for black to make two eyes. In actual practice, white must, might just leave that. 
because it is a very low move. It would give white an opportunity to play something something else, for instance, maybe somewhere in the, in the corner. This is also a big move that would settle the white group on this side. Or white could play from the center. Play A play from the center would also be a, a very strong move towards the left side of the board. And allow black to connect. That would probably be okay for white. And white could start playing large points again. So this is how white is using this attachment to get some shape there to start with and attack black. Going back to the starting position, I will take a quick look at this move. This is by far the most aggressive move and white's shape move against this is to play into the through three point. Black will probably cut and connect here. White threatens, it looks like a ladder, but actually white is just gaining some momentum. Uh, these three stones are the main group. These are the stones that white is going to save. And the other stones are creating some potential. They're just creating Aji. For instance, in this case, white would just be forcing from the left. Forcing from with 16, forcing from this side, and we can see that this stone in the corner is not completely captured yet. So black probably needs to add a stone there. Yes. And white will push again. And now we see that if, if at some point, let's see, black played here. If at some point white runs out in the corner, this is a move that sometimes white can look to, look to play. If black answers on this side, it will give white some extra forcing moves. For instance, this would be a forcing move, threatening to win the fight to capture, the, the race to capture. White actually wins this locally. If black captures from this side, this gives white this move sometimes. If white can make use of that from this side, curling around from this side, sometimes having that extra stone there gives some extra potential. It's not something white's going to play without any actual plan, but sometimes it works. So for instance, instead of doing that, white's probably going to push once more first. And if black answers here, white can get a nice position on the upper side. So this gives white a lot of influence in this area. And that makes up for the territory. Black did get something like 30 points on the right side. This, this territory is about 30 points, I would say. But white also has a very good position on the upper side. And again, one has to remember that this position started with black having two stones in the corner, a corner enclosure plus having this stone. So if we look at the right side as a whole, black started out with three stones on the right side of the board. So it's okay for white to be giving black a little extra territory, provided white is building a strong position towards the left side of the board. Another possible variation to demonstrate what white is trying to do in the corner, this would be a case where white could play that extension and then play a honey here with the idea that if black is careless, then white does have that forcing move at 26 and can capture these black stones. So black has to answer that and white can play some more forcing moves. And we can see that with these extra forcing moves, white has spread into the center even more. And, and this whole area is now more or less controlled by white, much more than um, black could hope to control it. White has a lot of control of the center and it will be difficult for black to be attacking this group. And black is down to something like 25 points in, in this territorial area. So it, it's not so much of a big territory because white is going to be attacking in the rest of the board and will quickly be able to catch up. So I think this again is a good result for white. In general, that Hane, this move that black played has become a little bit rare. I think that people are agreeing 
professional players are agreeing that it's a slight advantage for white when white plays here and gets into this variation. Most of the time, it looks like white is doing well. So to go back to the attachment, I did tell you there were two other moves. So we've looked at this move and we've looked at this move. So now we will look at the extension here. Sometimes this can be a dangerous move. What black is reinforcing the control of the right side. So it's very hard for white to get into that area. And white will probably, the local move would be to play down here. And something like this, white will move out. And fix his shape. This, this fixes white's shape. Now this group here, this white group is becoming fairly strong. White's final move at 14 is taking away this move I'll mark it. It's taking away the base for black. So next if white plays something like, well, something like this maybe, then this black group will be floating without a base. Therefore, black will probably extend to the side. This is an opportunity for white to jump in here on the fourth line, keeping the connection with, with this group. So it's if white plays here, that white's still pretty much connected. And pressuring black on the right side. If white can pressure black on the right side here like this, I think this is OK for white. And one more variation I would like to look at is, is black going down into the 3-3 three, three point. This is not an aggressive move. It's a very defensive type of move. And so even if white leaves the position, white has not really lost anything in this case. But white's local move is probably going to be something like this. And it's very much as if black had played the 3-3 three, three point first, this point and then white had played a shoulder hit against it. So it's a very low position for black. Black might continue with something like this. In this case, black does have to take care of, of this stone on the side here. So black can play this way to pincer white, put some pressure on white. And again, white's main idea should be to, to build some, some thickness towards the left side of the board. White doesn't really want to be too greedy on the right side of the board because that is an area where black has an advantage in the number of stones. So white is playing lightly on the right. And in this case, white is moving to the left. White has the covering move on the, on the side here. I think this is okay for white. Okay, back to the starting position. I want to recap the fact that black has four options at this point when white plays an attachment and that white's plan is usually to build maybe a base quite often this move is played when black has three stones or a three stone advantage on the right side of the board and white is trying to get inroads to the right side of the board so white's trying to make a settled group a relatively strong group in this area and there were some variations where white curls around and gets to influence in the center or towards the left half of the board. And by far, Black's most popular move is to play this way. But other moves, such as this one, also have been played a lot. There's a number of variations. The one I showed you in this video was the main one. And of course, these moves also should not be forgotten. But when Black extends like this, especially like this in the corner, we can remember that white stone here is relatively light. So white does not really have to take that much responsibility for it. And the local move would be to jump. So white is trying to play a light shape here. And this works very well in this variation. Or in this case, white can take away the corner territory. So that would completely change the flow of play. But it also is good for white when white is gaining a lot of territory in this variation. This is the fighting variation where it gets very tactical, but it's a bit rare nowadays because it seems that white has a slight advantage. So this is by far the most popular variation where white is getting a base 
in this area. So that's it for this video about the star point attachment. I hope you enjoyed, and if you did, don't forget to like the video, and please subscribe to the channel. Thank you.